32. The moment that Lady Shi Nuan entered the room, everything stilled. It seemed the entire world waited. The servants, Aranya, Delon, Kai, even Yang. They waited for her. She entered the room in a susurrus of silk, tall, reed-like, moving with the elegance of a queen, of one who knew her own power and magnitude. Her chin tipped into the air, her defined nose jutting upward. She was beautiful, more beautiful in her later years than many women half her age could ever dream. No wonder both her sons were so handsome. Delon bowed. Aranya did the same, feeling the weight of her own insignificance pressing down on her shoulders. Suddenly, she was very glad she had opted for the finer garb provided for her, rather than insisting upon staying in her filthy clothes. Kai did not bow, did not acknowledge his mother's entrance with even a mere blink. He was stone cold, a statue made of ice and granite. Aranya peered up at him, trying to puzzle together what was happening, why he did not address his mother, trying to figure out what he was so afraid of. Welcome, said Lady Shi. Silence. Aranya did not know if she ought to say something in return or if she should keep her mouth shut. Somehow, the presence of the elegant woman made her think that perhaps this time she ought to stay silent. But Delon wasn't talking either. It was Yong who rescued them. I trust you all have refreshed yourselves and are comfortable, he asked politely, his gaze coming to rest on her. She did not falter under that gaze. She returned it defiantly, daring him to test her, to try her, to see that she wouldn't be broken, to see that she would not betray Kai. Even if she didn't know what he hid from, what he was so afraid of, she would not betray him. And least of all, to Shi Young. We are much refreshed, yes, said Delon. We are grateful for your generous hospitality. Yang's eyes slid to Aranya's, as if looking to her for her own response. She politely ducked her head and said with probably more irony than wise, Yes, I am much refreshed. Lady Shi did not smile. Her mouth was drawn in a straight line across her face, her lips painted to be larger than they actually were. Coal-lined eyes half shut, she sat as if enthroned in the heavens looking down upon the mere mortals filling the earth. Yang smiled, however, and gestured grandly to the table laden with steaming food. Please sit. Let us eat and catch up on the time that we've been apart. And, of course, get to know the guests we are so delighted to host. Aranya shot a look at Kai, who held so still he hardly seemed to breathe. Delon was the first to sit down, then Aranya followed, and finally Kai. It was Lady Shi who spoke first as they began filling their bowls from the steaming platters in the center of the table. My son, how I have missed you, she said with the warmth of an ice cube. Kai said nothing in response. When he added food to his bowl, he chose the simplest things, he did not opt for the roasted swan or any of the other delicacies. Instead, he filled his bowl with rice and vegetables and a scant amount of seasoned chicken. She, on the other hand, filled her bowl with whatever looked the best. After all, she didn't know when she would ever have a chance like this again to eat such fine foods. She intended to enjoy it. I see your manners have only improved, said Yang to Kai and I'm sure that that has nothing to do, of course, with the present company you keep. Ming and Chung have proven themselves to be quite delightful. I must assume, then, perhaps something else has caused this silence. Kai exhaled as though bored. What should you like me to say? Shall I ask how your city is doing? After all, it is your city, lest anyone be confused. Delon glanced sideways at him. My dear, I'm sure I do not know what you're talking about, said Lady Shi. 
She dabbed her painted lips with a crimson napkin and took a dainty sip of tea. His eyes, which had been unfocused and glazed before, now sharpened. He leaned forward on the table, fixing his full attention on his mother. You deny that this entire city is held under your thumb? You deny that not a single person makes an independent decision without your consultation? You deny you are in complete control of everything that happens in this city? It took every ounce of strength for Aranya to not glance sidelong when Delon's hand froze in midair. Lady Shu set her chopsticks down beside her bowl. Slowly, she lifted her head up to fix her beautiful half-lidded eyes at her son. I've missed you. Where have you been? It was only now Aranya realized that though Kai had heaped his bowl full of food, he hadn't taken a single bite. He hadn't even lifted his chopsticks. He was staring at his mother, fire and ice shooting out of his hazel eyes, the tips of his ears turning redder by the second. He'd never been this unnerved and uncontrolled. She had to intervene, somehow. She had to say something, even if it was stupid. Aranya opened her mouth. This is a very fancy house you have here. How long did it take to build? Both Lady Shi and Yang swiveled their gaze from Kai to her. She pointed with her chopsticks at the door. That door alone must have taken months to build. I mean, look at how much gold there is. It's so intricately designed. And it's not just the door, it's this entire mansion. I've never been in a place this fine, except for the palace. But even that is not much nicer than this. All was quiet around the table for a long moment. A moment where she felt far more triumphant and smug than she probably should. She could nearly feel Kai's gratitude emanating from him beside her as his fist slowly unclenched. For once, that cold, stone-like expression on his face softened just slightly. Yang gave a polite nod and smiled. Well, I can assure you that the door did not take months, but it did take quite a while. Such craftsmanship, such art, is truly one of a kind. The house itself has been in our family for generations now. It is our duty to care for all the blessings that our fathers have bestowed upon us. Indeed, Aranya agreed. Were your fathers Evanescers too? Delon choked on a dumpling, but she didn't care if she was being rude or breaking customs. Yang had assaulted her in a bathing chamber, and if that wasn't cause for a little rudeness on her part, she didn't know what was. Besides, they thought she was a country bumpkin anyway. It couldn't hurt to confirm what they already thought of her. Lady Shi lifted her chin slightly in response to her question. Yang gave another smooth chuckle and said only, the magic does run in our blood, yes. He bore himself smoothly, calmly, nonchalantly. Every movement was perfectly calibrated to put them at ease. Every movement was practiced grace. But his eyes, those betrayed the intensity simmering just behind them. Something was wrong. Something that had to do with Kai's comment about his mother running the city. Delon had stopped eating. In fact, it looked like his mouth was full of food, but he couldn't find the stomach to chew and swallow. Aranya, on the other hand, continued shoveling in mouthful after mouthful. This is definitely the best meal I've ever had, she said. At that, Kai's stiff neck relaxed, and his head ducked barely an inch. The movement was so slight, she almost missed it. He was trying to avoid smiling outright. Nothing could have bolstered her courage more in that moment. Ought she to keep spewing stupid things? It appears most of us are not hungry, said Lady Shi, dabbing her red mouth again. Please do forgive the rudeness, but before you head off on your way. She trailed off, looking at her son. Kai? A word, please. He bristled, immediately going rigid. Aranya bit her lip, glancing sidelong at him. 
She wanted to say, you don't have to go, but she didn't know if that was true. Instead, she impulsively reached under the table and squeezed his hand. It surprised her when he immediately laced his fingers with hers, warm with cool, small with large. He squeezed her hand back, holding on tightly, and then his thumb swept over the skin of her hand in a brief caress. She pulled away before his mother or brother could see, hoping her flush was not too obvious. Without a word, Kai got up off his mat and followed the two tall, elegant figures through a side door. It shut behind them with a thud. Immediately, Delon turned to Aranya. What on earth was that? She shrugged, eyes wide, as she shoveled another bite into her mouth. I don't know. He growled, fisting his hand on the table. If he had just told me to avoid Gabe, this would never have happened. That boy knows nothing about what it means to work as a team. He doesn't think through the consequences of things like this. He gave a long, snarling sort of sigh and covered his eyes with his hand. Maybe it's because of things like this that he avoids working in teams, said Aranya. She leaned closer, lowering her voice to a whisper. There's something going on here, and I don't know what it is, but they want him for something, and he doesn't want whatever they want. Do you think he's going to be all right in there? Delon turned up his palms. I hope so. He can always vanish if he's in immediate danger. But something about this strikes me as different. They were silent for a while, and the food she was eating cloyed in her mouth, settling uneasily in her stomach. She set down her chopsticks. When you went to the postal station, was there anything for us? Delon exhaled, his jaw clenching. Actually, yes, there was. And unfortunately, it's bad news. What? Aranya pestered immediately, sitting up straighter. What? What did they say? He sighed, then sighed again. Princess Mei Ling has been kidnapped. 33. Lady Shi and Yang never emerged from the room, not even to bid them farewell or wish them safe travels. Instead, silent and straight-backed, Kai pushed open the door and exited after a long time. Delon and Aranya exchanged glances when he didn't look at either of them. His fists clenched tightly, and he strode past them both toward the double doors. With a mighty push, he shoved both doors open and left leaving them swinging in his wake. At least he hasn't lost his flair for drama, Delon muttered as they moved to follow. Aranya chewed on her lip as she scurried to catch up to Kai's long-legged strides. Kai? She called softly in the empty, opulent corridors. Your old clothes have been left for you both in your respective bathing chambers, he said. Kai? Best that we change and be on our way. Kai! She gripped his arm and yanked him to a stop. Slow down. He stopped. He looked down at her, at her hands wrapped around his elbow, and then his eyes trailed up her arm, her shoulder, her neck, to fix directly on her lips. His earlier spoken words seemed to echo between them, silent but no less potent. If you thought that was a kiss, you've clearly never been kissed before. Perhaps I should remedy that and then at least what you said would be true. She flushed, jerking away from him immediately. His rueful smirk was dark, dark, bitter, and so cold. It was like looking up into the face of a stranger. Kai, she said firmly, refusing to touch him again. What's going on? He huffed a dry, humorless chuckle and resumed his marching pace. You remember the way to your chamber, right? It's best if we hurry. You have a dragon's gut full of explaining to do once we leave, Delon said. I'm not happy about how, wanna lecture me? Get in line. Aranya growled low in her throat, quickened her pace so she could round Kai and block off his path. Enough with this, 
she snapped, waving her hand vaguely at him. We're leaving, all right, and we're never coming back, ever. But our first priority is our mission, and you can't forget that. His nostrils flared, and the way his eyes flashed reminded her of when they first met in Sushui, when they were sizing up each other as rivals. She hardly reached his shoulder, but that didn't stop her from returning his gaze with all the ferocity in her soul. Pull yourself together, Shikai. They stared at each other, a muscle in his neck ticking. It was like a string was pulled taut between them, ready to sing out if plucked. It stretched thinner, thinner. And then suddenly, it snapped. Kai closed his eyes, his face crumpled just slightly. It was only visible in the shift of his eyebrows. Aranya swallowed the abrupt lump in her throat. When she spoke, her voice was roughened. I'm going to my chamber, but I cannot promise I will be fast in the event of a repeat occurrence of what happened earlier. The vulnerability on Kai's face was gone in a blink. He won't touch you, ever again. I've made sure of it. She stared at him, then glanced toward Delon, who was staring at them with open concern. How, she asked. At that, finally, a blessed, cocky, stupid smirk. He doesn't like having leftovers, especially my leftovers, he said. Leftovers, she cried in outrage, shooting a look at Delon as if to call for backup. What did you tell him about us, Shikai? His smirk widened as he shoved past her. Nothing that wasn't true. Delon tilted his head back to stare at the ceiling in exasperation. It didn't take long for Aranya to make it back to the bathing chamber and change into her regular clothes. Her senses were on high alert, waiting for Yong to step out of any shadow or crevice with a too wide grin on his face. But she dressed with no event and quickly made her way to the door. Just as she reached out to push it open, someone appeared before her and her hand landed on a solid chest instead of carved walnut wood. Her eyes snapped up, her hand yanking back like she'd touched fire, and found herself staring into the same smile and pair of twinkling eyes she'd been relieved to avoid only a moment ago. Going somewhere? Yang asked smoothly, tilting his head to one side. She flicked her hands into talons and smiled roguishly. Out of my way, if you'd be so kind. Yang merely leaned against the door, arms crossed, and let out a long-suffering sigh. I'm afraid I cannot, my darling. Oh? She took a step closer, flashing her claws in his face. He didn't flinch, only regarded with a mild expression that belied the intensity behind his eyes. You're not going anywhere. 34. Kai's brain spun wildly as he strode to the door. The hallway pressed down on his shoulders, like the air was being compressed between him and the blue painted ceiling beams. His family's home always felt like this, constricting, suffocating. It had never been home to him. But he wouldn't bend. He wouldn't break. His knee hadn't bowed when his father was alive, and it wouldn't now. When he was within a few strides of the guarded double doors, Kai evanesced straight through them, not caring if it affected his sleep, and landed on the stairs outside beneath a pink-tinted sky. He drew in a deep breath, willing his heart to slow. This could have gone worse, so much worse. Since even Young wouldn't go against orders from Su Guan, he'd been allowed to leave, not that they could keep him against his will. No one could. He was an Evanesser. But he hadn't traveled alone, and as careless as he had always tried to make Yong believe he was, both of them knew he wasn't heartless. It helped nothing that one of his companions was young and lovely. 
The weight in his chest eased when Delon met him at the stables a few minutes after Kai arrived, and busied himself, saddling his mount and Aranya's. Of course, she would take the longest, dressed like a princess in those robes. His ears heated, and he blinked away the image of her in that vivid red, her hair swept away from her face, save for a few curling strands. She'd looked less like a snarling shapeshifter then, and more like, well, a beautiful young woman. One that had reached out with a warm hand to hold his, before he'd even realized how tense he was. Her hand had been much smaller than he was expecting somehow, riddled with scars like every magic wielder's, and strong with calluses but still tiny. I'm expecting an explanation, growled Delon, with a very pointed look at Kai. But I'll wait until we're out of here. He'd be waiting a lot longer than that, but Kai said nothing. Delon let out a deep breath as he saddled his horse, grunted in irritation when a stable boy came over to assist and shooed him off with a flick of his hand. Kai finished Aranya's horse and led it out of the stables with his to wait in the open air. Delan was behind him a second later. What's taking her so long? He asked with a wrinkled brow and a frown. Kai went to roll his eyes and shrug, but stopped. All the blood leached from his face, turning to ice in his veins. He turned horrified eyes to Delan. Realization dropped like lead into his stomach. So hard, so fast, his pounding heart had no room except for one word. Aranya. Delon was flying off his saddle, even before Kai evanesced out of his. In a flash, Kai's sword was drawn, and Delon had his jian ripped from the holster and loaded with two arrows. They barely had time to glance at each other, Hardly enough time for Delon to grab Kai by the collar and yank him down close to his face. Don't lose your head. Don't be rash, he hissed. Then Delon was running, taking the stairs two at a time back into the mansion, and Kai vanished. He reappeared inside, and in two more leaps, he stood before the door that led to Aranya's bathing chamber. His lungs clenched so tightly, he could hardly draw a full breath. Dragons blasted, dragons blasted, dragons blasted. Don't lose your head. Delan didn't know how timely his warning had come. Or perhaps he understood Kai better than he showed. Whatever the case, his voice forced Kai to stop before that door, to keep himself from shoving it open without a thought, sword swiping. It gave him a heartbeat to realize what he walked into a trap. Apparently, his brother had been right. He couldn't run from his family forever, because he wouldn't leave Aranya behind to their mercy, honor and professional protocols aside. She knew where he'd been all this time, and with one slip of her tongue, all his plans would be unraveled. At least they didn't know Kai and Aranya had lived in the same city before this mission. Then they could simply track her posts and know where Kai had been. But maybe, maybe there were more reasons he wouldn't leave her behind. He had the sickening realization that if his family had Aranya, they had him. Silent as death, Kai sheathed his sword, going against every instinct raging in his blood. Then, with a deep breath, he straightened his shoulders, placed both hands flat on either door, and shoved them open. A blade against his neck was the first thing he met. His pulse hardly leapt in response, because he was expecting it. He tilted his head back, bearing more of his vulnerable flesh to the blades of Young's lackeys that guarded the door, and crossed his arms over his chest. There, by the silent and steaming water of the bath, was Aranya. She was dressed in her normal clothes, the colorless robes of a commoner. Her wrists were bound behind her, her unshod feet tied at the ankles, and her mouth gagged. 
Bruises spread across her face. A cut above her eyebrow, dripping blood down her temple. Her hair tangled and mussed. The high-necked robes she wore had been ripped open to her collarbone, making space for a gleaming knife against the pale and vulnerable skin of her throat. One flick, and she was dead. Dark eyes flashed beneath a swollen, furrowed brow as they met his. Her chest heaved with every gasping breath. It was true. Every instinct inside him rebelled at this picture of her. He hated seeing her bound, hated seeing that Young had hurt her. For this, he would make his brother pay. He couldn't help but realize, with a sinking sort of dread, that he cared more about Aranya than he wanted to admit, more than he ought to. Iron hardened his spine. Kai lifted his eyes from the swirling vortex of fury and fear in her eyes, from the fierce edge of the blade at her neck, up to the wretched grin of his older brother, the cunning gaze that raked over every inch of his face. Young thought he'd won, thought he'd played the card that would finally make his brother bend. But Kai had spent his life matching wits with his brother, and he couldn't help but notice the blood trailing down Young's forearm and jaw. Aranya hadn't gone down without a fight, and the fact that she'd landed blows of real pain to an Evanesser gave him no lack of pride. Kai lifted one arm and battered away the blades at his throat, then let out a sigh and rolled his eyes. Oh, please. It's too late in the day for this sort of nonsense. Aranya blinked in surprise. Then her eyes narrowed. Did she expect him to reveal his panic to his brother? Did she expect him to show how fast his heart raced? Is it? Young purred, his arm across Aranya's shoulders, holding her back against his chest as he tilted the knife, tickling the flesh beneath her jaw. She jerked involuntarily, but didn't whimper to her credit. A pretty little one, this son Aranya, even despite the wide shoulders. Aranya's face colored a deep red. Either Young had noticed this insecurity of hers like Kai had, or he simply thought her build too strong and muscular to suit his refined taste. Whatever the case, the barb was clearly intended to humiliate her to discuss her like she was a pet for purchase. Kai let his eyes travel down to hers for a second, and then he smirked, locking his gaze on hers. I know. Her flush deepened, her chest rising and falling even more rapidly. Her eyes were rounded almost too wide for her sockets. What are you doing? She seemed to be asking. There was a tinge of something in her face, that revealed a sense of betrayal, as if Kai would ever betray her to the likes of Young. The door burst open behind them, and Kai didn't turn to acknowledge Delan's entrance. There was a shing of swords, and then the movement stopped. He could almost feel the older wielders groan behind him. Anyway, Kai said flippantly, waving vaguely at Aranya and returning his attention to Young. You clearly want something. Otherwise, you wouldn't trouble yourself with confronting our shapeshifter. I see you discovered her claws. Young's blade pressed harder against Aranya's neck. She flinched when it punctured. A drop of blood beaded and then trailed down to pool in the hollow of her throat. It's simple, really, said Young with a smile. You for her. She can go free pretty face unmarred. His knife flicked toward her eye, its blade dancing against her lower lashes. She jerked away from it, but he had her pinned against his chest. There was nowhere to go. Instead, a whimper escaped her gag, and her terrified gaze shifted from the knife to Kai, silently pleading with him. In all the time that he'd worked with Aranya, He'd never seen fear like this on her face. 
He never saw her forced to be still, while death stared down its sharp-tipped blade at her. That was when it hit him. Swan Aranya wasn't fearless. Had never been fearless. It just seemed like she was because she never gave herself a chance to be afraid. She threw herself into danger so fast that she couldn't be scared. Recklessness was how she coped with fear. Which meant this was possibly the most terrifying moment of her life. Kai swallowed, his stomach turning over like rocks. Don't move, he wanted to tell her. And to himself, don't lose your head. Something in his face must have given him away, because Young's grin widened. See? He purred, knife tip dancing close to Aranya's other eye. She squeezed both of them shut. I knew she meant something to you. Or perhaps I'm just not in the mood to watch someone get mutilated, Kai said dryly. That always was, after all more, your style. Young's curling lip sent a shiver down Kai's spine. You don't have to watch. Turn around if you have to. I can even loosen her gag. So you'll know what you're missing. Will it be your name, she screams? Kai's control snapped. Thirty-five. Aranya tried to block out the slither of Yang's words in her ears, how they trailed like a claw down her spine. She couldn't think about anything except the tip of his knife and the memory of Ye Ye lying unconscious in their tenement in Suguan. He had no one besides her. If she died, he died. She'd already shifted her hands into talons, had worked one up between her bonds to slice it in half, only to discover another of Yong's tricks. The bonds didn't break. They tightened. She'd let out a surprised cry of pain. Spelled vines, Yong had said with a smug grin. They come in handy for binding shifters with talons. Then Kai had marched in, and her heart had sunk with dread while simultaneously nearly flying straight out of her throat. His face was devoid of all feeling except that wretched wry smirk. She was glad he kept his composure. Really, she was. But also, did he truly not care if anything happened to her? Couldn't he show the slightest reflection of her panic? Apparently, not until Young had threatened to make her scream. Kai vanished, and Delon ducked beneath the blades at his throat, attacking the guards on either side of him. Somehow, he fired his jian with one hand, threw a knife with the other, and simultaneously landed a powerful kick to another guard. The arm around Aranya's shoulders loosened, the pressure at her back vanishing. Blades clashed behind her. Aranya slammed her head backward, connected with the side of a jaw. There was a grunt of surprise, a yell from somewhere, and the grip on her fell away completely. The knife was gone from her throat. She didn't have time to be relieved. Now was the time for the three of them to fight together to get out of this. She tucked close and rolled away from Young to her knees, then jumped and barely got her feet under herself before she fell. She jumped again, swinging her bound hands beneath her ankles so they were in front of her now. In a swift movement, she yanked the gag from her mouth and coughed. Then she wobbled, lost her balance, and fell back to the ground. Stupid partial shapeshifting. If she'd been a full shapeshifter, she could have shifted out of these bonds, could have turned into a wild beast and ransacked this whole chamber. But she was nothing but a partial shapeshifter. Give up, Yong shouted. Aranya rolled, pushing up on her numb hands. A few feet away, Kai and Yong were locked in battle, swords flying as they vanished and reappeared in a deadly dance. Stop running, take your place, make our father proud, said Yong. Our father is dead, Kai snapped and thrust his blade with fatal accuracy at his brother's heart. Yong disappeared before the blade found its mark. He might not be the only one dead before this is over. And then Yong was suddenly right in front of where she was half sprawled on the ground, his sword coming straight for her face. 
It happened too fast for a scream. Aranya threw herself to the side, landing on the edge of the bath. One more roll and she'd fall in. Yang's blade came arcing for her again. This time, she did scream. A loud chang resounded as she squeezed her eyes shut. They flew open, and Kai's blade hovered not even a hand's breadth above her throat, blocking the death stroke. Then arrows were flying. Kai and Yang both vanished. The arrows skidded across the tiles. Aranya tucked her knees to her chest and somersaulted to unsteady feet. Delon was at her side in an instant, blood spattered across his face, smearing on his beard and nose. A glance at the doors revealed he'd killed all the guards. She barely had a second to be shocked and impressed. No wonder he was in the secret services. But if the pounding of footsteps outside the chamber revealed anything, it was that Yong's force wasn't limited to a handful of guards. We've got to get out of here, Delon said, while Kai is keeping that wretched excuse of a human busy. He whipped out his knife, coming for her bonds. She jerked away frantically and shook her head. They're cursed. They can't be cut. His eyes widened in horror, meeting her gaze for a split second. Then her attention was snagged by a guard running toward his turned back. She used every bit of momentum she could muster, grabbed hold of Delon's arm in a way that he barely braced himself to keep from falling, and swung her bound feet toward the assailant's face. Heel connected with jaw, snapping his head backward, and Delon had enough time to whip around and send a knife flying for the death blow. Then he was bending, wrapping one burly and bloodied arm around her knees to hoist her over his shoulder. Just as she was squeaking, the door burst open, and more guards flooded into the chamber. Jeons loaded and pointed at them. Surrender, they barked. Delon let go of Aranya, holding his hands up, chest heaving. She didn't move, holding on to his sleeve for balance, hating her partial magic more than ever, and glared daggers at the guards. Behind them, the constant clash and shouting of Kai and Yong. Apparently, Kai had been justified in not wanting to pass through Gabe. Then suddenly, in front of them weren't the guards. Before them stood a tall woman with a gold-set ruby dangling on her forehead, robes of the deepest crimson, with long painted eyes and blood-red lips. Shi Nuan, Kai's mother. She lifted her chin, impassive and elegant even in the midst of battle. Those liquid black eyes landed on Aranya for the first time today, and they skewered into her soul like blades. You, come with me. And then she merely reached out with one hand and tapped Aranya's forehead. The world vanished around her. 36. When Aranya opened her eyes, she was in an unfamiliar room. It was small and dark. The only light was from round red lanterns hanging from the ceiling, golden tassels trailing almost to the beaded edges of the cobalt blue rug. The low table in the middle of the room gleamed gold, and fringed multicolored mats lined its perimeter. Three walls were trimmed in stained wood, shelves lined with scrolls. The fourth bore a map of Junning High that was so large she could have wrapped herself up in it to sleep. In front of her, Lady Shi. Sit, the woman beckoned, gesturing to the mats. She glided to the opposite side of the close space and ascended to sit. Aranya, on the other hand, wobbled where she stood, hands turning blue and ice cold. She wasn't sure if she should flash her talons and leap, or hop rather, across the room to slash into Lady Shi's face. Don't be reckless. She decided to sit. It took a few unsteady hops to reach the mats. She was forced to bend down, grip the edge of the table, and lower herself into a sitting position. This was utterly ridiculous. Will you get these off? Aranya asked, holding her wrists across the table. Lady Shi's eyes flicked with boredom as she deigned to lower her gaze to Aranya's blue fingers. Just as bored, she lifted her attention away from them. Where has my son been hiding? She asked. 
Adrenaline hummed in Aranya's veins, but with it, a steady chill that tempered her saucy replies. Instead, she remained silent. Say nothing, and your feral wielder friend will die. My guards will overwhelm him quickly. No matter his skill, he is vastly outnumbered. Then I have but to issue the command. He could lose a hand, an eye, a leg, his life. A shudder sliced down Aranya's spine. Like mother, like son, apparently. She couldn't help the way her breath huffed through her open mouth, or the bite of pure terror at the thought of the knife that had just nearly gouged out her eye, doing worse to Delon. Then, to her surprise, Lady Shi leaned over, pressed a lily-white cloth to her mouth, and began hacking. Her whole body heaved with those coughs, and they sounded so painful Aranya couldn't help but wince. The woman finished, delicately dabbed her lips, and set the cloth beside her, beneath the table. But not before Aranya glimpsed the blood staining the kerchief. Kai's mother was dying. Where does your loyalty lie, little shifter? Lady Shi said, lifting her chin as if nothing had happened. Will you give a man's life to allow my treacherous son his rebellion? Do you wish for Kai to have the freedom to betray everything that matters in his life, so much that you would let an innocent's blood spill, make a widow of his wife, take away a child's father? Aranya was no fool. Something very, very wrong was happening here. It wasn't as simple as Lady Shi presented it. Even so, whatever fate awaited Kai at the hands of his family, was it worse than what Delon would face? One word, little shifter. The name of the city where Kai lives. And you are free to finish your little quest with your little feral friend. Delon would balk at being called that. And Kai? Aranya asked. Is he free to come with us too, if I tell you? Lady Shi ran her tongue over her blood-red lips, tilted her head to one side, and smiled, slowly. Kai is always free. He is an Evanesser. Lies from the seven layers of D.U., one word, Zhu Shui. She wanted to fight, wanted to refuse, to call their bluff. But she didn't think either Yong nor Lady Shi was bluffing. Their faces flashed with the darkness of ruthless killers. Only one word, and they would be free to go. Free to continue their quest and find out what was happening to Lord Swan Wan and the other missing magic wielders. Free to succeed to provide for her grandfather. She stuffed her hands in her lap, staring down at them. They were starting to swell. A bite of panic sliced through her. How was she to ever get them off? That was when it clicked. Her head snapped up, met icicles beneath sweeping coal across from her. Then she swiveled her attention to the map on the wall, at the markings trailing like black bugs up from cities like Suguan, Shanet, and cities farther south to converge on one city. And from there, one solid line straight north to Butagan. The city of convergence? Gabe. What had Yang said about her bonds? She'd been too distressed to process his words. Now they echoed around her mind like bats screeching in a cave. Spelled vines. Her breath whooshed out of her just as the eyes across from her narrowed to slits. You, Aranya accused and held up her wrists. You know what happened to Zuan Wan. These are his vines that are binding me, which means you have some connection to him, and your map has a trail from his hometown, Shawnette, straight here. She wasn't prepared for the blow. It landed so hard to her face she was knocked backward off the mat. She rolled, face aching and stinging, brain wobbling inside her skull, and found herself scooting backward until she hit a wall. Scrolls clattered on the shelf behind her. She stared down the shaft of a jian, 
Two arrows aimed right for her heart. Everything stuttered to a halt. She breathed hard, swallowing back a choking memory of tickling whiskers and soft white fur. Bean padded paws and a wet rosebud nose. The name of the city, said Lady She, face cut as though from a glacier. Kai? Or yeah, yeah, Delon. Why did she have to be a phoenix scorched partial shifter? Why did she always have to be a weak failure? Why couldn't she ever be strong enough to save the people she cared about? The people she had a duty to protect? Because while her first duty was always yeah, yeah, she was honor bound to protect Delon and Kai too, as her comrades. One moment she was staring down those arrows, and the next she was standing in a tenement doorway, stunned to see yeah, yeah collapsed on the ground, fully believing in that horrible second of forever that he had died because she wasn't there, because she hadn't been what he needed her to be. It was the same thing now. She was just a young graduate who happened to make the right person happy at the right time and ended up on this mission that she wasn't even sort of equipped for. And now she couldn't be who Delon, Kai, Ye Ye, or Junning Hai needed her to be. If only she and Kai hadn't both shown up to the ward post that day. She squeezed her eyes shut. Tsushwe, Tsushwe, just say the word. Just betray Kai and don't look back. She swallowed, opened her eyes, opened her mouth. She was going to do it. She was going to tell Lady Shi where her son had been all this time. There was no point in sacrificing herself, Delon, and Ye Ye to save the Evanesser who'd messed up her life. And then, at the last second, realization hit her. Lady Shi and Yang needed her needed this information from her. They couldn't kill her until they had the name of this city. They could kill Delon, she thought. Sickness washed over her so strongly, she nearly vomited right then and there. But then she remembered how many guards he'd taken out in the bathing chamber. How did she know they'd even managed to subdue him? Were Lady Shi's threats against him merely empty words to get her to comply? And could she trust this woman not to slaughter her anyway? Once they had their information, she was useless. Delon could hold his own. She needed to do the same. Her eyes trailed up the john, up the exquisite robes of Kai's mother, to her eyes of ice chips. I won't tell you, she said. <laughs>